So the chip of the day is a CA3080. Uh, this one's from Harris Semiconductor. And it is an Operational Transconductance Amplifier, or OTA. All right. So here's the pinout. And you say, oh, that's just an op amp. Um, input, positive, negative, plus and minus rails. It doesn't have an offset current adjustment, so pins 1 and 8 are open. Um, the only difference is pin 5. Pin 5 says amplifier bias input. And so we say, oh, well, what what is that? So if we take a look at the simplified uh, schematic for the part, um, you can see at the lower left there the amplifier bias current. You can say, oh, I see. You can change the current through the long tail pair, the, the differential amplifier at the front of an op amp. And you say, oh, well, that's, that's pretty cool. You could change the current there. So what would that do to the output? Well, in a normal op amp, it doesn't do anything. Um, the differential pair acts as a current steering device. And it doesn't really matter how much current is going through. It's the percentage of left to right current that matters. And then that is a voltage change and that gets sent to the output. But this particular device is wired in a strange way so that the output is not voltage. The output is current. The input is voltage, but the output is current. So changes in voltages end up being changes in current on the output. And because you have control over the total current, that first pair, you have the, the bias current on the front, that will change how the amplifier amplifies. It, it, will, it will amplify the current a little bit or amplify the current a lot. And that allows you to make this thing like a voltage controlled amplifier, but it's voltage in, current out. So these are what's known as transconductance amplifiers. And here's the definition of transconductance. The change in output current divided by the change in input voltage is the transconductance, marked GM. This will be familiar if you're used to vacuum tubes and stuff. But um, if you wiggle the input, you're wiggling voltage, and the output will wiggle, but it'll wiggle in current. All right. So here's another block diagram of the part that's a little bit confusing, but it shows you that the currents that are set up initially um, are actually sort of mirrored on the output. So whatever currents you have there, you end up magnifying those currents into the output. So again, the output is a current. Input is a voltage, output is a current. So what can you use this thing for? Well you can use it for voltage controlled amplifiers. That's one of the uses of it. And I'm gonna be using it in a synthesizer where I need a voltage controlled amplifier. Now, the, this is the schematics for the very original Moog uh, uh, synthesizer, 1970. And if you take a look at the schematic, you can sort of convince yourself, oh, that's the same thing that we just looked at. Um, the current set up through the initial differential amplifier is adjustable. It's, 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 a, it's a line there in the lower left. And you set up the initial current. And then if you look at the way that the uh, next stages are, they're not voltage stages. They actually are current mirror stages. So you're, you keep taking those currents out. And it's, so it's a kind of a current output device as well. Now, um, the original Moog used all discrete logic, but of course Moog moved on in time. <laughs> and this is a schematic from a Moog device. This is the actual micro Moog. I think there's another name for it also, but some people call it the micro Moog. And uh, I'm not quite sure if I've ever seen one of these, but anyway, it shows that the envelope generation for the output is being done with a, a CA3080. And you can see here that pin five is being controlled. Um, and so, yeah, this, this actually does the, uh, the voltage controlled amplifier for, uh, the, uh, the Moog mini or Moog micro, I'm sorry. And, uh, so that's what we'll, that's the type of circuit we'll be using in the circuit that I'm going to be playing with. If you look around for other synthesizers and see what parts those things use, oftentimes you'll run across something called an LM13700. 
and the 13700 is basically two transconductance amplifiers in one package. And it has a little bit of extra stuff in it as well. It's a bit fancier. Um, so I debated whether I wanted to build my device with an LM13700 or to build it with the, uh, the CA3080. Um, I chose the CA3080 for two reasons. One is it's real old school and, and just feels good. And um, it seemed to be a little bit more available, a little bit more price affordable. Um, and uh, it's it's a single device in an 8-pin package. It just seemed to be a, a better fit for what I wanted to do. But again, a lot of, uh, a lot of synthesizers are using the LM13700. All right, so let's go in the garage and uh, turn this thing on. So this is the circuit I'll be using. Um, I'm taking the input, I'm dividing it by 10 um, to bring it into the amplifier and then uh, it'll do its amplification. We'll take a look at its output. Uh, the first time I wired this up, it didn't work. And that's because remember, it's a current output. You need a load resistor. Without this load resistor, it doesn't work at all. Uh, and so you need somewhere for the current to go. So I put a 10K here. And then I'm gonna use the control voltage uh, in a, with a potentiometer so I can change it anywhere between minus 12 volts and plus 12 volts. And you wanna limit the current into that base of the control resistor. And so I have 120K here. Um, and there we go. So this is the uh, circuit over here. This will be the uh, uh, potentiometer that, that I can move up and down. I am putting in a signal. Uh, currently I'm putting in a sine wave at one volt. That one volt will be divided by 10. So actually uh, 0.1 volts peak to peak is going into the uh, amplifier. And uh, right now we're getting out 500, we're getting out, let me adjust it a bit. Uh, right here, we're getting out plus or minus one volt. So it's, it's multiplying by 10 right here. And uh, as I adjust that potentiometer, I can make it go all the way to zero. When it's at minus 12 volts, it's at zero. And then any other voltage, it's adding current to that, to that uh, control. And I can make it go all the way here to about plus or minus 1.5 volts. And uh, yeah, there you go. So it does act as a voltage control oscillator. It acts really, really nice. Now I was a little bit worried that it was going to be non-linear uh, with input voltage. And uh, what I mean by that is as I change this voltage, if I change this voltage one volt, two volts, three volts, will it follow a straight line? Will the output follow a straight line? Or will it have some type of uh, nonlinearity? So I did a test last night, and uh, these, I measured the peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage on the output, and I recorded what bias voltage was required to do that. So anywhere from 11.3 volts was full, full max on to, uh, uh, I have this. I have this backwards here. Uh, minus 11.96 volts is is off. These these two should be these two should be swapped back and forth. Anyway, I graphed them right, so I decided to graph them. And so it hit, this is the output, zero to three volts, and this is the input that it took. And I drew a straight line through them, and it looks good to me. So yeah, it does seem to be like a, a linear translation. Uh, I like it. So yeah, that'll be my chip of choice and uh, I'll figure out where to go from here. Okay, I thought of one more experiment to do before we uh, leave this video, and that is to modulate the, uh, the input. Instead of having a potentiometer, I'm gonna run it with another function generator. So I'm, I'm uh, modulating the input at one kilohertz, but I'm gonna modulate the envelope at 100 hertz. That will be, this will be the VCO, uh, in my in my in my product and then this will be the low frequency also the LFO um, and you can see that we are modulating the signal up and down up and down up and down looks good to me